One of the very easy things to do in electronics and fundamental to be doing in embedded systems is to control time. Controlling time is done through timers and I would like to review a little bit of generalities right now. Time in embedded system is fundamental and we do need to be accurate in evaluating time. Because of many different applications, uh, you might want to implement scheduling of computation uh, and you want to make sure that you allocate accurately enough processing time to all your different tasks. You also might have real-time constraints. You want to make sure that your system will react within the given boundary of time and you need to evaluate this time or these next coming deadlines. You might want to do any kind of digital signal processing applications, signal sampling and generation for audio, TV, PWM, that's in particular what we're going to use in our motor uh, control system. You want to use time in communications. Everything is based on a time base, like from UART to Ethernet, and so on and so forth. Or as well for navigation. The basic concept of GPS is based on a very extremely precise clock and time management. So time is a very fundamental thing in a embedded system. And the question of keeping time in electronics is very important. How do we do that? The first thing we need to do is to have um, a time base. And this time base will be given by an oscillator. The general principle of what you'll find on the microcontroller is the following thing. You do have a resonating element that is linked to a clock driver. This clock driver will make sure your element resonates at a very clean frequency. And then from this clock that you'll generate, you will be able to implement a hardware counter that will simply count increments within your time base. And as such, you have been able to monitor time and you'll use that in your software. There exist many different uh, resonating elements, starting from quartz oscillators, quartz resonators. There's pieces of quartz properly um, cut that will have a very nice quality factor and resonate to the given frequency. So if you inject a proper energy from your clock driver, the system will oscillate and will stabilize it at a very precise frequency um, with less than 100 ppm variations on your frequency. You can also have MEMS resonator, where you'll put some pendulum or oscillators on, um, on the silicon beam, and that will um, make possible to create time-based very cheap uh, and integrated with silicon, but at the same time, it has uh, some very large susceptibility to press to temperature. Um, other circuits, more so uh, coming from the uh, CMOS or VLSI technology, will be inverter rings, ring oscillators that will resonate a given clock frequency, as well as LC, LC and RC circuits where you'll be able to create oscillations and you'll make sure to add op amps to regenerate your signal so you always keep generating a proper frequency uh, for your signal. Finally, there are also all sorts of crazy techniques atomic clocks and many more uh, opportunities can be used to generate uh, or to keep time in electronics. In our microcontroller, various clock sources can be used to control the sys clock, which is a system clock, the main clock you use to control your microcontroller. Uh, you can use some internal RC oscillators that will run at 8 MHz. Um, you also have uh, some PLL clocks that you can use to um, multiply or divide your base frequency to any different things. Uh, but you can also use uh, additional clock sources, such as um, you have some, um, of course, crystal uh, inputs in order to give your main clock, but you also do support different um, clock signals in your system, such as a 40 kilohertz clock that you will use to control your watchdog timer, um, you will have um, low-speed external crystal that you can use to create real-time clocks. Um, you can have specific high-speed internal RC circuits for ADCs. So the bottom line is that while we have various clock sources, it gets very, very complex and messy in your system. So here's just a screenshot of our um, data sheet. And you can see that we have many different clock inputs, external clock inputs, as well as internal generated clocks that all get multiplied, divided by PLLs and routed to all sort of different uh, peripherals. So for instance, our system clock um, 
that is here will actually be further divided and sent to different timers, sent to our peripheral buses, to the UART, and so on and so forth. So it can get very complicated. And the question to configure your cloud distribution network is um, uh, very difficult to apprehend. In order to do that, everything will go through a bunch of registers. As usual, in microcontrollers, everything is memory mapped, and we can control everything. Things will go with the RCC uh, registers to control the clock as well as a configuration. And how do, you, do we set them? Well, we do have to control them and you'll have to follow the documentation once again to understand which value put in which uh, registers. Uh, so for example, here's an explanation of um, one of those registers and it tells you that uh, bit 31, for instance, contains the PLL no div information that tells us if the PLL is divided by 2 for the MCU or not. Pretty cryptic to investigate, but if you look at the basic diagram of your system, uh, you will actually be able to find that PLL no div does control this divisor of our clock frequency right here. And as such, you know what things you're going to route to which signal, through which um, path. So I invite you always to refer to this basic block diagram for our peripherals. They give you tons of useful information. So you can either do that, or luckily enough, everything will get configured in the system STM32F0. So at least for the basic operation, you should be covered. Now that we have a clock and are able to select clocks for every different peripherals, how do we keep track of time? Well. As I said, you need to use a basic counter. And counter can be implemented, uh, are actually implemented in hardware in our system, essentially for controlling timers, for instance. But one could imagine to also write software counters that you can use in your, uh, in your programs to add additional time basis. As an exercise, I invite you guys to uh, take things offline and think how to implement basic uh, counters in C as well as in hardware. Now, what are the timers applications? Well, there are various. For example, timers can be used to control, to measure the time between two events. We have event one, event two. I want to monitor this time. How will I do that? Well, I will reset the counter, count until I get the next one, and boom, I can latch the value and know the exact time that happened between two events. I can also measure the time between two pulses. And that way, I can measure what is a frequency for a clock. Or I can measure a pulse duration. That can be used to monitor, for instance, um, how long the user is pushing on the, um, on the button that will, in turn, uh, control a feature or, or something else. 